we have a fascinating conversation that I really wanted to hear from. Uh, Maxime, let's see, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, Maxime, what are we talking about today? Uh, today, we're going to talk about model merging and mixture of experts, like a kind of uh, new fancy technique uh, to do models for cheap. I saw I saw the abstract and I was like, I have this, is, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> so, uh, stoked to hear it. Uh, do you need to share your screen? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see, yes, it's right here. Cool. I will be back in 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Maxime Lebon. I'm a machine learning scientist, and uh, sometimes I also match models on the side. And this is what we're going to talk about in this um, conversation. Um, so why merging? Why should you care about uh, merging models? Uh, so here is a, a good example of why this is actually uh, relevant to the conversation. Uh, it's uh, about the OpenLM leaderboard. If you check the 7D bar models, uh, it was like two days ago, uh, all of them are actually merges. Um, so it really tells a story, right? And it says that um, these models, they become really good. And you might say that because they overfit the uh, test sets, which is not entirely wrong, but there's more to it. They are actually like quite good uh, beyond the fact that most of them are contaminated at this point. Um, to start uh, this conversation, we're going to talk about uh, merge techniques. They are uh, not five, but four of them I want to talk about. Uh, SLEP, Deatize, Passthrough, and uh, Frank and Emery. There are more uh, in the wild, but I think like these uh, four are a good representation of uh, the, the, the most interesting ones. So let's start with SLURP. Uh, it stands for spherical linear interpolation, and it's a very popular technique, very easy to use. Uh, even the um, idea behind it is quite uh, intuitive because it's basically averaging the weights, right? It's linear interpolation, but spherical, so we conserve some properties uh, in this space. Um, it's limited to merging two models at the same time only, uh, but you have a lot of um, possibilities. You can uh, define the interpolation factor for different type of layers and at uh, with different gradients. Uh, so you can do really precise uh, work with that. Uh, the only problem is that like from my experience, it doesn't matter that much actually, like the, the, the base parameters are quite good. And if you, if you tweak them a little, it, it won't uh, drastically change the, the performance of the resulting merges. Um, and as an example, uh, here's one that I've uh, made. It's called Beagle 147B, and you can uh, you can basically uh, find it on the Hugging Face Hub. And I share all the configuration that I've used uh, to make it so you can reproduce it. Uh, another popular mesh technique is data ties. Uh, data ties is based on two different uh, techniques. Uh, there's ties and then there's there. And the main idea, the intuition behind these two techniques is that we want to reduce the redundancy in the model parameters. Uh, these parameters, they tend to like store the information over and over. So here we are going to use uh, techniques like pruning. Here pruning means that you're gonna reset the fine-tuned weights to their original values, uh, so to the values of the base model. And you're also going to only keep the most significant parameters, so the top k percent uh, uh, most significant parameters. Uh, so those are really interesting uh, in terms of redundancy. Then you're going to add other techniques. You can like, rescale the weights of the different models to make sure that, uh, that they correspond. There's also uh, something about uh, the, the sign um, that you need to elect, uh, but I don't want to delve too deep into the technical details. Uh, what's really important to know is that you can merge multiple models with this technique, uh, unlike SLURP. And so people uh, really um, went crazy with this ID, and you can find uh, matches with a, a lot of different models. Uh, it's really interesting to see. And the, the, the idea behind it is that we want to extract a task vector. So we want to extract a vector that represents the, the knowledge of these models, and we want to combine them in an efficient way so they retain all this knowledge in the, the final match model. And as an example, here's one that I've made. It's called Daredevil 7B. And once again, you can find the configuration if you're interested to produce it. Uh, then we have the path through technique. Um, 
similar idea is the depth of uh, scaling by Kim et al uh, that made the solar uh, model. And the idea here is that you're going to concatenate layers either from different LLMs or from the same LLM. Uh, both work, actually. Uh, it's quite experimental, uh, right? But at the same time, it really works in practice because uh, you have more layers, more parameters, and it's been shown over and over again that uh, you get better reasoning abilities and these frank and merges, uh, they're just better. They just can answer questions that the original models could not answer. So really interesting technique. People tend to make really uh, super big models with them. Uh, so you can see like a 120 uh, billion models. Uh, another one from uh, Eric Hartford is called the Professor with 155 billion parameters. Um, so then the problem is like uh, how to, to run them. Uh, you need uh, to have uh, at least a 3090 or 4090. Um, and then we have mixture of experts, uh, or to be precise here, yeah, Franken mixture of experts. Um, so the idea behind the mixture of experts, uh, to, to be very brief about it, is that you're going to improve the efficiency because you're not going to activate the entire network, but only sub-networks, so your experts. And also improved performance because you have more uh, parameters in general that you can leverage. So these models tend to be more performant, more accurate. The problem is that they are difficult to fine tune and they also require a uh, high VRM capacity because you, even if you only activate a sub network, you need to store the entire thing. Uh, an interesting technique uh, that was developed, uh, I think, by Charles Godard, the author of MergeKit, is to combine the FFN layers of different models. So really, like you, you grab some models, you combine the fit-forward uh, network layers, and you add a router that you can initialize in different ways. And this is how I've made the beyond the model that you can see. Uh, you can see that it's composed of uh, four different models. Each of them has a, a specific, um, I don't know, like uh, expertise. Um, and this model uh, works pretty well. Uh, so it shows that even if the idea is quite simple, it can be quite efficient in practice. Um, then we have merge recipes. In this section, I want to talk about like some really like recipes on how to, to do it um, efficiently. Uh, the first one I want to mention is the library that uh, really powers uh, this entire stack at this point. It's called MergeKit. It was created by Charles Goddard, and it implements all the merge techniques that we talked about so far. Um, so it's really, really powerful. We can do a lot of different things with, him, uh, with it. Um, and as you can see, you have these nice YAML files uh, as configurations for your matches. So you can easily share them and easily iterate over them. Uh, this is one that I've recently uh, used uh, to make a model, for example. Um, and then when you, you match your models, uh, how to know if they perform well. Uh, it's actually, I think, the most difficult problem and the one that is the most costly because Making these merges, you just need a CPU. You don't even need a GPU. So the, the cost is really uh, running them to be able to evaluate them. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot access the LMC's um, arena. Um, so we have other benchmarks that can be a good representation of uh, how good the models uh, are to humans. I would say that if you can afford to have more benchmarks, it's good because you can get a better representation of the performance of your model. Uh, here, I want to cite like the OpenLM leaderboard, but it has some issues, unfortunately, so it's not enough, I would say. You have news benchmark suite, um, which, which is different. Uh, it has the excellent AGI Evolve benchmark that I really like. You can see um, uh, YOL, yet another LLM leaderboard. This is a leaderboard that I've made and that uh, uses uh, this benchmark suite. Um, then you have uh, EQ Bench uh, by Sam, a really good um, benchmark. And you have empty bench uh, more uh, geared toward conversations. So with that, you can have a pretty clear picture of the performance of your model. Something that I want to mention too is that after that you match your models, you can do fine tuning. And a good way of doing it is doing uh, direct preference optimization, or DPO. It's like a free lunch on top of these merges. It's quite effective. It's not too costly. Um, the only problem is that we constantly need new preference data sets. Um, Argila uh, is doing a, a great work at providing like a new preference data sets almost every week. Um, and the goal here is to make the models better. It's not to censor them, it's really to make them better. And you can also instill new behaviors. For example, if you have a, a data set with a lot of conversations, it can be really helpful if you want to have uh, a model geared toward this kind of uh, task. 
Uh, finally, as a conclusion, um, if you're interested and if you want to match model, I would recommend uh, checking the article I, I write about it, but also the Lazy Match Kit uh, Collab Notebook. It's a nice wrapper. Um, you just have to specify a configuration and click one button. Um, so yeah, very cheap way to make models, and uh, I, I hope that you will enjoy it. Happy merging, everyone. Maxine, thank you very much. This was indeed fascinating. It sounds like a, it sounds on one hand pretty familiar from just like merging more classical types of models. On the other hand, like we just have completely new challenges and opportunities here, and it feels like a very active line of research. So it sounds like just over the next year or so, we're probably going to see like new frameworks and ways of thinking about this emerge, and also how you maintain benchmarks in like a reliable way so that you're not just like overfitting yeah. because now you just have like so many. It sounds like there's just like a like a full jungle of, of research uh, and discovery to be made there. So, absolutely. Thank you very much for walking us through this. Um, and please, if you could also like the, uh, the the blog that you wrote about this, if we could add this to to the chat, yeah, that would be useful too. Yeah, with pleasure. Thank you very much.